Hi, everybody. Welcome to Two Dumb Dads Monthly Download. I'm Chris. I'm Nick. And this month we are playing The Last of Us. Um, oh my God, I, it's been so, so long that I've wanted to have this conversation with Nick here. And so I am so grateful that we have this, this podcast, this show, this thing we do that I was able to force you to sit down and play this game. <laughs> um, yeah, it was interesting. So I should point out that before I really got to sit down and play it, I had a ton of issues just getting into the game. Um, yeah, you, you got fucked. I did. And it made it really hard to want to play the game. So part of the problem, I think, came down from like, you just don't have a PlayStation 4, no, right? Like you're no, not a PlayStation please. guy by nature. I used to be. Like, really? Was, you were? But PlayStation was the first system I bought myself. I never knew that. I thought yeah. you were a Nintendo kid and then you I had went Nintendo, into the, uh, the, the Xbox. No, I loved PlayStation up through PlayStation 2 and then I got an Xbox. And when oh. I made the switch to doing 360 and never went PlayStation 3. Um, and from there, I've just kind of stuck with Xbox. I I like the controller design. I liked with Xbox. I really enjoyed the Xbox. You liked the Beast, the Behemoth. I did. The Duke. I didn't at first, and it grew me. Um, oh, that fucking but, original Xbox controller was the worst. The new ones I love. Um, Hit but, the black button. What the fuck? They're all black. <laughs> God damn, that was a piece of shit. Oh, you loved it. Um, they brought it back. You know that, right? The, the, behind, the, the behemoth, behemoth. The Duke. Yeah, they brought that thing back. I don't know. Um, I, like I, I think it even has the white and black button as well, um, instead of like the two controllers or the two triggers. No, man, I like my I like my nice streamlined one. Somebody needs to burn that thing. It's true. Um, but more importantly, what made me stick with Xbox going forward was I liked the Xbox Gold interface. I liked the Windows interface. I just liked the way Xbox is Xbox is designed. Um, for me. With the Xbox One, it's very intuitive. But anyway, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You're an Xbox guy. Point is, you didn't, uh, you didn't have a PlayStation. Did not. And so I gave you my old PlayStation Three. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I of course had this game from when it first came out. Um, I've purchased it in every possible way, shape, and form. I bought the original uh, when I got my upgrade uh, to PlayStation Four. I got the remaster. Um, so subsequently, I gave you the PlayStation Three. I gave you the game. I gave you a controller and you had no problems right none it was wonderful um, so other than there was no game the controller didn't work i had to start my own ps account to get said game i bought a controller that also didn't work i had to order another controller then i had to get the downloadable content and then i had to actually play the fucking game um so by the time i actually got into the game i was like fuck this noise i don't want to play it see personally i just think you you didn't plug in the controller i think the game was probably in there but it might have been in the wrong box I, i'll acknowledge that no no, all the Uncharted games are there. We couldn't have played Uncharted, where I have one, two, and three. Readily they do have the... remasters. I could have played the remaster of those, too. You picked the fucking game. Um, I, did, I did, and I'm so glad I got so, to play this again. So, anyway, once I did all of that bullshit, I got to play the game. The greatest game. The greatest video game story ever told. Mm, it's it's good. It's not my favorite game, but all it's right. good. So, aside from all of the hype, um, what did you, like, uh, this is legitimately my favorite game. Um, I'm not going to go so far as to say that there aren't complications with this game, that there aren't issues, but I just, oh, I adore this game. Um, so, the question I've waited for five years to finally hear the answer to, Nick, what did you think of it? I, I really liked it. Um, I thought it was great. It deals with a genre that I enjoy, just as, as a viewer, which is kind of that zombie outbreak. The, okay, so you're talking about, like, the zombie... Yeah, because yeah, it, it basically yeah, is a zombie story, right? I mean, that's, story, that's right? the world that's set up, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so I really liked that. I thought the gameplay... Uh, sorry, I thought the story was great. Um, I thought graphically it was really good for a PS3 game, because you never know what you're going to encounter going back. But I... But yeah, I, I mean, keep in mind, like, and th this was made in 2013, and so in 2013, this was the game. Yeah, it Even helped. when the PlayStation 4 came out and they remastered this, this was the game and all that stood up i really liked that mm -hmm. um uh so overall i mean in terms of the content of the game and the story of the game and my experience you know quote unquote watching it if you want to use that term since it's very much a storytelling type game <sighs> okay um well i'm gonna get to why i, say <laughs> I know that. i yeah. know i um, know i liked that um, okay 
I I should talk about. Do you want me to talk about the things I did not like about it? I mean, let's let's hold on. I mean, okay. yes, but at the same time, let's. Uh, so before we go any further, um, let's just say the the thing you have to say anytime you talk about like a, a thing, guys. This is Spoilers. a spoiler. Um, like we're gonna talk about the game. Like again, this is a five year old game. So if you haven't played it, you're, I don't know. You're probably not going to. If you're I was to listen. Pretty spoiler free on it though. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, um, I've tried really hard over the last five years not to say anything. Yeah. Um, and I'm really glad I did because I, I like y- you text me right after the opening happened. Yeah. And I was like, yes, yes. I watched that. My wife was watching me play while I did that. And she was like, what the fuck are you playing? Yeah. Um, and I was like, I don't know. I'll just keep keep going. Um, so the point is, if you haven't somehow uh, to this point played the game or seen the game or know the story of the game, uh, two things. First, go play the game. It's a great game. I love the game. game. Uh, but if, if that fails you, then you can find our videos on the website or on YouTube or on Twitch. Um, just search for us, Two Dumb Dads, and and you should be able to find our, our gameplay. Um, so that being said, you've been warned, and now we're going to get into all the wonderful spoilerific stuff. All right, Nick, tell me what you didn't like about the okay. game. So the only thing, that, only thing that really brought down the experience for me is I fucking hated the gameplay. I hated the fucking gameplay. So what, what didn't you like about okay, the gameplay Okay, so it's exactly. a couple of things. So one, and I will fully acknowledge that I think that, and I was talking to you about this earlier, um, I think some of it was the transition from not having played a PlayStation game in a really long time. So mm. there's a controller adjustment. And when you're doing things, like this game involves a lot of stealth and it involves sure. a lot of, con- I mean, how do I say this? Like finite control of things you have to do in terms of sneaking around and firing a gun and getting used to the control and where the buttons are at. And because yeah. um, I'm just not used to that anymore. It was hard and I died a lot. And so it made it really frustrating because all I wanted to do was progress the fucking story. Um, I mean, I look, I will be the first person to acknowledge that, yes, the gameplay is not perfect. But man, I love that bow and arrow. See, how can you not love the bow and arrow? Because I just I had issues with there's lots of people walking around looking for you and just pop up. Pow! Right in the face. Yeah, that's all well and good. Then you, you pick up the arrow again. It's great. If you're used to doing it. Um, again, a lot of my issues stem from the fact that I had, I had mechanical issues playing it. Um, yeah. And, uh, and yes, I will, I will definitely say, uh, like the, the remastered version definitely also runs a bit smoother and you also were playing on an old, probably dust filled PlayStation three that who knows w- what the gameplay situation was probably. like for it you. It also but. just, the controls to me didn't feel intuitive. So like the button that would aim and then shoot, I would never hit the right button. So I think when I play a game and I will also acknowledge that I experienced this, if I'm going to reference another game, uh, when I played the first Batman Arkham Asylum game and okay. then I played all that series and went back and started playing the first one kind of the same thing happened they tweaked that game so the button feel got more intuitive and the first one just isn't as much okay so i just i had issues intuitively with what i was supposed to do and what i was supposed to touch so it slowed down the game for me and made it complicated Mm -hmm. on top of that i'm not a huge stealth gamer in like a story game. So because sure. what I wanted out of this game was the progression of the story. And so it's a big like stealth around and be slow. Great. Oh, except that like I want to get the story. So now this is just annoying the fuck out of me. Just let me shoot some people in the head. Just let me shoot them in the head. So but the one thing I will say is that in this particular game, like that slowness that like that creates a sense of anxiety. I'm thinking of one uh, of one section in particular where Ellie is being uh, is trapped by the uh, cannibalistic rape monster. Oh, yeah. um, and like that, like when you have him stalking you and you're trying to stalk him like that slowness, like that is the story right there. But, like that is the experience that that character is going through. And and I don't know. I, I feel that moment so viscerally that when I finally get to stab him once, I'm like, oh, I fucking got you. Yes. But I was so hindered and just my, I should say like the movement of the game, like my actual movement of the character, all that stuff made that more frustrating for me than enjoyable. Sure. So what I should say is while I enjoyed the game was crafted in terms of story and what what was going on. The gameplay was the thing that really took me out of it, and I found annoying and made the game less for me. And see that that I find shocking because when you so first of all, how did you play the game? Like, did you run around guns blazing, or did you try and uh, and stealth um, your way I through it? I started with trying to stealth my way through it until I got incredibly fucking frustrated, and then mm-hmm. I kind of when I could went gun blazing because I yeah. just and again. 
it's not the stealth stuff because I've played other games where stealth is a part of it. Sure. It was the fact that I didn't feel the controls helped me with that stealth mode. I also uh, I didn't think to ask what 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 setting did you play it on? Normal. Normal. <clears throat> okay. I almost always play a game on no- for like especially if we're doing stuff like this and there's a normal setting because sure. I want to have some challenge. Yeah. In terms of the AI, um, but because I'm trying to get through it at a pace, I don't want to like. Right. And hard. I should point out too that that's something with with the AI within it. You know, you're not your your AI villain. is fucking stupid. Which is funny. I think it's just because of when it was made. Oh uh, yeah, it's five years yeah, old. Yeah, so like, it's the, funny. The technology just wasn't there. It's so crazy to notice that though when you've played something like mm-hmm. Shadow Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, or whatever, where sure. the AI is really intelligent and adjusts, and now you're like, oh, this is what it was like when AI didn't adjust to you. Yeah, I'm playing a game right now. I think I talked about it a few weeks ago on the podcast in the open. Uh, I'm playing The Division, and like I, I was shocked just how smart sometimes that that's i mean don't get me wrong sometimes they just kind of like walk at you and like <laughs> i'm gonna kill but like sometimes they, they'll flank you though they'll, they'll like have somebody go on each side and like oh shit this is actually really smart yeah um and yeah they just they just don't like so, there will be lots of times where they just like they run at you they're about to stab you and then they, they turn around and then <laughs> run behind like a door three feet away or something like, well that was stupid but okay I'm, I'm going to shoot you with an arrow in the head now it does show you how far we've come though with that kind of stuff in games um sure but yeah, so, you know, really for me, like, that's the thing. I, I think a lot of this enjoyment was taken away by, like, my struggles and my dislike of the way the gameplay is set up, especially, like, the running. It just, it didn't feel smooth, and this isn't, like, a graphical thing. It just didn't seem smooth when I had to make turns, or I had to crouch, or I had to fire my gun, or I had to, like, I just, it never, as much as I was playing it, the controls never became intuitive. It never felt, it never felt So, ease. when you talk about intuition, I'm curious, are you, what do you mean by because what I, you keep saying that like well I didn't know this controller I'm like well fuck you like I I get like that's not the game's fault that you you don't play a PlayStation that's your fault no but usually I mean listen I had a PlayStation I played it for a lot of years so even when I've played PlayStation games here like eventually it come back to you like just where things are at but I kept fucking up like which which button pulled the gun up versus what button fired and I forget if it's I think it's L1. I think it's the same as everything, isn't no, it? No, it isn't, because that's why I kept hitting the wrong... And it's I, not L2? No, it's like it's like, it's like like L1, R2. Like, it's... I don't know. I guess my the thing is I probably could have went in and fucking adjusted shit, but I just... Yeah. I never do that. No, I always I don't just either. play the game. And so, because there was... I wish I should have written it down to be very specific, but there was one button combination that didn't feel right, and it was with the aim versus fire. Um, hmm. And so... I just, I kept fucking that. Well, the problem is when you're fucking that up, if you do get in a firefight, you're dead. Sure. Right? You know what I mean? And so, because then it caused me to die a lot, or it caused me to fuck up the mission, or I wasn't able to run fast enough and make the jump, it became frustrating because I was playing the same thing over again, which really hindered the progression of the story, which mm-hmm. I wanted. Okay. So that's what I mean. It just, things didn't, when I got used to the controller, where my hands needed to go and what they needed to do didn't feel natural to me, which I think in a really good con- gameplay situation, you kind of get that. I mean, yeah, look, I'm, the, the gunplay for me is where this, uh, where the gameplay falls apart. Um, guns don't feel good in this game. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, for the most part, if I have to pull out a gun, I get really disappointed. Like, well, fuck, now I have to stand here and I have to, like, miss 70 shots. And I started with, you know, 30 bullets. And I'm going to end with two because i'm going to miss everything because this just isn't good gunplay yeah. and maybe that's purposeful too based but on I, the world and things. I, I will say i think some of it is purposeful because as much as you're supposed to be experienced with guns you're not mr military guy you yeah. are like just this badass who happens to keep surviving um but we'll, we'll we'll get there once we get to the story. Okay. Um, so one of the things I think makes this game so good is the uh, the performances. Um, there are so many wonderful and amazing performances in this game by uh, terrific, terrific voice actors and actors um, just in general. Um, but it, for my money, you can't beat Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson. Uh, that's uh, the guy who plays Joel and the woman who plays Ellie. Mm-hmm. Um, I, Troy Baker, just in general, like he's right up there, if not the best voice actor, uh, in video games right now. And I, I would put my money on Ashley Johnson as well in the same boat. Um, like what did you think of their performances? Um, I really liked it. Um, that was one of the things that really struck me from the beginning of this game was the the performances and the dialogue and the writing of it as a whole, because sometimes you can have. 
not great video game writing, um, mm-hmm. but good delivery. And sometimes you can get the opposite where you don't have uh, great writing, but you have a really good delivery. Um, so I think right now my favorite game in terms of dialogue and delivery and storytelling is the Batman Arkham series. I think they do just as a comic book fan, they do such a fantastic, good, fantastic job with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but this game was right up there. I, I felt that same feels. It felt very much like I was watching an event that I was playing. So it's like watching a movie. And that's what I look for in these type of games is I want to sure. feel like I am in an interactive movie, if you want to put it that way. And I thought they did a great job at that. I felt engrossed. It felt very true. It felt um, believable. Um, you know, I had a few of those video game moments. You're like, oh, yeah, this is video game writing. There it is. There it is. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there is definitely some video gamey moments. But for the most part, I think they do a really nice job of keeping these characters very grounded. Um, I especially like the, the performances. Um, I, I really think that uh, the mocap was surprisingly well done, um, especially because this was one of the early games to do that, from my understanding. Um, and so a lot of those nuanced moments, for example, like the opening scene with Joel and his daughter, um, like that is a very touching moment there where they're looking at the watch and um, like she plops her head down in his lap and that stuff just doesn't work if you don't believe in the characters. Yeah, I can, I completely agree. And, um, I actually wonder, so before I started playing it, I, um, I, so I'm sorry. Okay. I started playing it and I was like, oh, this is really good. And I looked up if it was mocap because I was curious as someone who's in the field and finds this really dynamic. Um, and I thought it was a good choice for this type of game. I think when you're playing these types of games, the more you can make it organic and make those movements and those feelings seem lifelike, which they did, I think a really good job at the more it draws you into these characters, yeah. um, which I would agree with you. I thought, especially if it was one of the first, cause I didn't look at that. Uh, it was great. It was, I a, think it is at least, it was That's a really, understanding. really good choice by, by the developers of this game. Sure. I mean, um, yeah, it just doesn't, it doesn't work any other way. Personally. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, I think you might, maybe with newer graphics, you could get away with it because of what they're able to do. But um, mm-hmm. I always think when you can bring, actors in even if they're not even if the body is not the same as the voice because a lot of times it isn't um when you can add those human movements um Mm -hmm. into a game like this i think it's hugely beneficial and i think in this case it really was yeah um so before we get into the story there's one more thing that i want to uh i want to discuss because Mm -hmm. i think this is one of those things i know this is one of those things that you don't have this game. This game isn't the runaway success that it was without this. And that's the music. Um, the music by Gustavo. Uh, I'm going to mess up this name. Gustavo Santo Santo Lala. Let me look at it here real quick. Um, so this is that beautiful kind of banjo-y accordion style, um, like Southern music, I think is what how I would describe it. Um, like nylon string type of stuff. It's nylon just... string guitar. Also, I think there's some um, steel string guitar, but I'd have to go back and listen. I think, yeah, that sounds right. Um, but it's just this beautiful, beautiful soundtrack that really captures the like the the beauty of the game and also the like the oppressive um, like the melancholy of the game. It just it it really just captures everything so well. Um, and you can tell that, that they, they recognize that because they keep bringing him out to play guitar before every press conference. Um, it's so good. It is so good. Yeah. You know, um, I agree And that I will probably keep coming back to this. It felt very much like watching a film or like a a TV, whatever I'll say film. Um, and that's part of it, right? Sometimes within filmmaking, music can make or break a film. Um, and they did a really good job with crafting that environment and using music in a way that I think is different than it's used in a lot of other video games. It was a character in in and of itself as opposed to just being a backdrop. Sure. Um, and I like that. Again, like you, I thought it set up the environment of what was going on in this world. Mm. Um, and, I mean, across the board, this game does a good job at that. Like, you feel very engrossed in this game. And also, everything they did seemed fairly purposeful story-wise. Yeah. Um, so I also really enjoyed that. All right, let's jump into the story. The thing yeah. I've been waiting for for five years. Nick, that first scene. Okay. That first fucking scene. So going into this, I So ha- let's point out now, we're a parenting podcast. Yeah. We are both fairly new parents. We both have two-year-olds, approximately, who are just like, mm-mm. that first scene. I first played that that five years ago 
when I was single. No, not single. I was very much married at the time. Um, when I was married, I was not having kids. I had no plans to have kids. Um, the last time we played this for this episode, I was just like, I think when the uh, when the stream was going, I just kind of sat there for a while and was like, um, guys, I'm not sure I can keep keep going right uh, now. Um, so it's funny is it didn't affect me that way, which normally things like this do. Um, yeah. I just think that I was so, I think I was still in that place of like, I just didn't want to play the game. Um, because of all the things we talked about earlier. But um, so here's the thing. When before I played this game, I knew it was about like a guy and a kid. And I just made the assumption it's a guy and his daughter, right? That's sure. just like where you go with it. So when the game starts, like, okay, so this is the girl that you're with that's going to be with you this whole game. Um, Never thought to look at the cover of the game. No, I didn't. I just, <laughs> just, I just, also, I'm just not paying that much attention, right? Because sure. I didn't have a cover. I just had the. Oh, you bought it yeah, digitally? But, yeah. So, mm. um, so when that happened, I was like, oh, fu-. I think I was literally just like, oh, fuck. Like, I just wasn't ready for that. So it completely, it it flipped what I thought the game was going to be. And Mm -hmm. it was nice because I was like, okay, I don't, I know I'm going to be another kid in this game. Um, But it wasn't quite what I thought was going to be. And then you had the huge jump in time, which I also didn't know was going to happen. So it was, it was a surprise. It was a hook. It definitely, I did not see it coming. I didn't have a huge emotional effect from it. I should also point out that I didn't have a lot of the like, I'm a dad. This, this being a kid is affecting me moments in this game. Um, oh. And I don't think that's the game. I think it's just how I play video games. I don't connect. Mm-hmm. Is And this is not to say this game isn't beautifully crafted. I just don't connect with video games in that way because there's, because I, I'm not playing a through line. They're stopping and starting. So emotionally I'm not, I'm not getting that carry through that I would in a film. Um, that's not the game's fault. That's just like me as, as a video gamer, but it definitely, I was, I was like, verbally, I was like, holy fuck. So as far as that first, uh, that first segment is concerned, like the things that I love about that is that it really sets the tone. Like aside from the actual like importance of, um, Joel losing his daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that that moment really sets the tone for the rest of the game. Um, so the first thing I think this section does, uh, like once you take control for the first time and you're playing as Sam, uh, no, Sam, no, it's, uh, Sarah, Sarah, his daughter. Um, and you're walking through the house. I hated that so much. Did you really? Yeah. Cause I hated the fucking gameplay, but that's so good. You're walking through and then you're watching the television. Then all of a sudden, fuck, there's an explosion off and like right there. And the gameplay and the actually getting around the house. Did you like anything about this game? Shit. Everything that wasn't the fucking gameplay. Um, I could just sit back and watch it. I loved it. I could have, I could have, Easily had someone put all the cutscenes together from this game and just watched it and had a much more enjoyable oh, experience. Oh man, those I I thought walking around the house, like seeing, like picking up the cell phone, seeing the the fridge open, like trying to figure out where your father is. That's amazing. I think that is such a good moment because you're looking around and like it's it's environmental storytelling. You're you're getting everything that you need to know about this world, what's happening. But you can't interact with everything. You can't. It's not like Gone Home where you can interact with damn near everything. Well, like, no, because it's not. Like, I just. It, it was it was cumbersome and annoying to me. Wow. But what happens in it, I find like when the explosion, I was like, oh shit, that's fucking cool. And then I got a cutscene. I was like, yeah, let's do this. And you get all the pictures along the wall as you're going down the stairs and you start to know it's like, oh, they're like, the mom's not here. Is she? what happened to mom? Like something is like, tragic has already happened to this family. And they've apparently been able to overcome that tragedy. Um, but then like, you know, once they, they get through and you, you get the big car explosion and you're running through the, the streets with your, your injured daughter and, oh man, that's so good. Yeah. The running through the streets didn't bother me. I still, it felt clunky, but I mean, and, and it is, and it is, but I think that's the thing. Like, I know you don't understand, like when things feel clunky to me in a storytelling game, it hurts the game. Um, I mean, just, have you ever tried to run around while you're carrying a person? It's no, clunky. but I'm playing um, the game. I don't need to be clunky in the game. So what I really like about that, uh, about how it builds the, the world here is like, you think like, okay, we made it. We got oh, it. Yeah. Everything is fine. <laughs> There's somebody here who's going to help us. And this world just isn't going to let you have that. This world is going to say, fuck off. I'm going to shoot you in the face, even though I can tell you're not infected. So it's the, it's the, um, spoiler 
other the game of thrones moment uh, we where already, we already did that show. yeah but this is for something different so spoiler oh. um it's a game of thrones moment where they do an action that makes you feel like nothing is safe they basically set up for it's like your world's not safe and it's not what you expect i think that is beautifully done in that first moment sure um um and i yeah that's that's what i really loved about that is like it, it establishes for the rest of the game like look you you think you know what's going to happen but even in these moments where you think there's happiness there's we're not, not. Gonna, we're not gonna have it um so after this we go we we jump forward several several years joel is now a gray-haired man living it's, in it's boston 20 years i 20 think it's years. a pretty big jump which it's I, a lot which it, i really like it is a sizable jump um like the you, we you find out throughout the game that a lot of shit has happened to this man in those years and he has done a lot of shit mm-hmm. um but whatever it is, we're living in Boston in a really shitty situation um, with our our acquaintance, let's say, Tess. Mm-hmm. Um, your special friend. Yeah, your, your person. Yeah. Your person. Your person. However you want to say what a person is, it's your person. Yeah. Um, and you're kind of a shitty person, right? Like even at the beginning, you're you're running guns, you're selling guns, you're trying to see. It was funny. I never thought of myself as a shitty person. I just I thought you're just a person surviving in a world that's hard. Like like I I noticed that this time. I was like, oh, I, I never quite caught what's going on here. But yeah, like you're a gun runner. You're you're selling guns to the highest bidder. Um, you're just like, yeah, I get you're trying to get food stamps, but you're doing it. Like, there's a lot of things you could be smuggling, but you're smuggling guns right now. Yeah. Um, character development. And so yada, yada, yada. Uh, was, was there anything in this section that really stuck out to you? Um, well, can I move? uh, Let me see when we talk about sections, I move into the like kind of introduction gameplay where you're trying to get to the fireflies and you're trying to get the, sure. So what stuck out to me in this whole portion of this first like learn to play the game portion right like Mm -hmm. set up the world where you're going to meet the fireflies and essentially meet the new girl right like the next thing's gonna progress story ellie yeah yeah the even more so than your daughter dying uh you uh tess shoots the guy what's his name sorry you're better with names than i am she shoots the one dude who like basically fucks you guys over she just fucking oh i forget his name yeah but the... she just pops him like all of a sudden you like there's a conversation she just fucking shoots him and all of a sudden that gave me more of a visceral robert? reaction Is it robert yes um that moment where she does that in this game and i was like that affected me more than the daughter dying and this is why the daughter dying felt plot device to me right like uh-huh. okay to move, okay this sucks that was so stark and so sudden and so violent and visceral that i was like oh my god and it affected me in a way that violence in games does not usually happen because it was so cold and so fast and so real mm-hmm. um that re- it really i was like oh this game is gonna be something um yeah it's a great establishment oh, and like, it happens like look this is like if if you don't serve us and you you cross us this is what we do you're just gonna this die. is this is our like we're not gonna uh we're not gonna cross hairs about it we're not gonna whatever we are going to uh like if it, we're not good people we are here to survive and this is how we survive well exactly and it's it's the old there's an old uh fight choreography thing when you do plays and films that isn't followed a lot that sometimes if you just kill something really quickly it has more of a in a really long drawn out conversation oh, sure. and that's what this was and i was like oh okay um fuck man uh it really set me and it, it put me off in a good way um and really set up who she is as a character too and i was like okay i really want to know more about this person and so mm-hmm. that beginning of the game that first section really hooked me in to the game outside of the zombie genre of it, right? Sure. Um, and I thought that was nice. It made it about something different and more complex than just a zombie survival game. So one thing that happens while we're uh, going to meet this guy, though, is you you find your first collectible. And I'm, sh- I'm, I'm curious, um, how much time in this game did you spend looking for collectibles and such? Um, Probably like the first three or four hours I spent a lot of time, and then I just kind of said, fuck it. Okay. Um, I did find the one in the tree though, because you you played. I specifically to, yeah. told you that that and was, I was a like, thing. Oh, I actually found two in trees the second time I played. And then I got to the point where I was like, I don't really care. Um, I didn't care about the Firefly medallions, but there were some collectibles that I really cared about, and we'll get to those a little bit later. Yeah. Um, 
But the reason I like the thing I like about collectibles and such in this game is that it really lends some some world building here where like whether you're looking for literal collectibles or you're looking for ammunition and healing and I guess you'll call them pills or medicine, whatever the hell you yeah. use to upgrade. Like the idea of like looking in every corner, trying to like lockpick every door. I find that very honest to what this world is. And even though it slows down the the progression of the, of the story, I think it really, it helps to build the understanding of like, why would everybody be so cruel to one another when, when, like the, you don't have like you would think that sometimes people would be kinder to one another in the worst of situation, but this goes off of that uh, philosophy. Like, look, when there's nothing left, when you have to look through every drawer of every house of everything to find a can of tuna, I mean, somebody has that tuna, you'll do crazy things to get it. Yeah, I actually really like that because I think for me as a as a viewer and a consumer, it, it points to more of what it probably is like, where you have like your small group of people that you do care about and everyone else can go fuck themselves um and because this game made no bones about that and that's that's a genre thing to me that's the post-apocalyptic zombie genre thing Mm. um and because it did that and set that world up and because you're playing inside of it i also really liked it i liked the searching element i mean i think whenever we do these because there's a time limit on how long we have to play them for me as a gamer like it's it's a forced thing that i'm doing and so it takes some of the like you also had a uh like you didn't get to play it for the first couple right, of weeks right. and so you you had a, a big time crunch and then you had issues and then you had difficulty right. blah 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 blah. but blah. i do i do like that element of the game right i like that sure it, you have to, you're searching for everything that you need to have and because that's part of the world and such an integral part of the world i think they did a great job with that and i think on normal you're normal like you normally have enough like you're never like really that's why i played it because i was like um, i don't want to i don't want to kill myself trying to beat this game when I, I i played it on hard um like on the, the the remastered version there's also another setting above hard which is grounded which is basically it's hard but they don't give you any of like the the indications of where you can pick something up like nothing flashes yeah nothing. like you have to recognize something in the environment that you think you can pick up and then pick it up and see if like, i was nah, playing with that. no no time constraints that's probably what i would want to play mm-hmm. because no, it, it sounds cool by yeah. it. um um so so we meet ellie how did you what how did you feel about the rest of this first ellie section just kind of to kind of sum up the test area so um you know this is the part of the game that felt very and again it didn't bother me it was just part of the story it felt very like by the numbers type zombie oh girl girls infected gotta get girl here and i was like okay so that's what i'm gonna do um and it felt it felt normal to me. Like it's still well done. The sure. storytelling is good. The acting is good, but it was just like, okay, I'm doing this. This feels like a normal game. Um, it was trying to find some explanation for why Joel would, would keep this kid around. Yeah. You know what? The one thing I, I would have liked a little bit more in the game in terms of storytelling is I didn't feel like it affected Joel as much as I would have as a father. Right. Like, what do you mean? When she first comes, it feels very, distant i i didn't get enough of what i what that character was thinking at points i kind of would have liked to me i said really it, yeah but that oh, might have just oh man that might have just been i think me. that comes through so clearly yeah i didn't like get the it damaged up. dad who just like he he doesn't he can't get close anymore like yeah. did you get that with tess like whatever we have it's like no they they are clearly in a relationship of some sort but he won't get close enough to call her something um, you have this dog, this girl who's, you know, he, he knows could become a surrogate daughter. And he's like, no, fuck this. I'm not going to get close to you because you lose things in this world. Yeah. And I knew that intuitively as a viewer, but that's because I know that, like, I know, I know the trope they're using. Sure. Um, I didn't feel like it was clear in the storytelling. And again, oh, this is me bad. being incredibly nitpicky. I still really liked it. Oh, I thought, um, I thought they did great. But that's just me. But you also like the game as a whole. Well, yeah, I, I do. Mean, so um, that'd be like, Chris, I gave you a great piece of chocolate cake with the frosting's a little off. You'd be like, don't care. I love chocolate cake. I, I do. I love cake. 
shit, give me a cookie on top of that this, cake and I'll this be is che- This is cheesecake for you. It's very, unless it's awful, it's very hard for you to hate the that's, cheesecake. That's, you're not wrong. You're I know. not wrong. Story-driven linear games with minimalistic gameplay elements. Yeah, I'm, I'm in. Can I talk about how thankful I was that it was a linear game? Can I talk about, like, that's something I did really like that it oh, was. Yeah. I knew where I had to go and I, there was, like, <laughs> places I could roam around within that. Yeah, you can look around for, like, story oh. shit if you want to. I was so glad building. it was not a sandbox fucking game because oh. I just... I can get into a sandbox game, but if I had to play a sandbox game in a time element, I'm just like, yeah, I don't think we will ever play a sandbox and open world game on this, on the, for this podcast. Cause it just, cause we will have to spend like three months trying to play through that. And I'm the like, go find everything in the sandbox person. Oh yeah. I remember when Spider-Man two was out and we were just like, well, fuck, I'm trying to go save this, uh, this world from uh, doc, doc Ock or whatever. Yeah. It's like, Oh, but there's a mugging happening down there, and I gotta stop that. Oh shit! There's a token over there. I guess I have to go get that token real quick. Oh, there's another mugging. Oh, there's a there's a bank robbery, whatever. It's like thirty minutes later. I'm like, hmm. I wonder I if Doc Ox destroyed the world yet. I didn't do anything. Um, so I was really thankful to digress that this was a linear game. Yeah. It, like it let me. It, I knew where I needed to go and how I needed to get there. Absolutely. Um. So. So. To be thankful for that. Tess kills herself. Oh my god! That's back to the fucking violence thing. Didn't see that coming. Back to, um, we haven't stated anything about the violence thing. I just said that it was very visceral. visceral. The, the cutscene violence for me was very visceral and very realistic. And okay. So something like that happening, I was like, all right, well, there goes a character that I really like. Um, yeah, I, I like that. I yeah, really enjoyed I, that moment. I, I love it too. I think for a game, it's shit that does not happen very often. And I was like, all right. But it still struck me as a like. Holy shit. And it's funny because all these, we'll get to more of these, but all mm. these things that happen affected me way more than the first one. And maybe it's just because they- No, built, I mean, I get it. They're like, you get more time with them. Yeah. And you, that's built upon, like each one's built upon, and I just never fucking see it coming. Yeah. Because you keep thinking like, all right, I guess this is going to be my companion for the rest of the game. We missed a big point. So why are we trying to save Ellie? Oh. Because she's the cure. She's not infected. I mean, oh, I guess. Do they actually tell you that? Yeah, she's bit. She's like, hey, right yeah. with that I mean, first we section. knew she was yeah. bit. I mean, let me rephrase that. They find out she's bit, but I don't yeah. think they ever tell you that she's the cure. Well, I think you just kind of pick it up. Yeah. Well, you're, um, yeah. It's but, not until you run into her, what's her face again, that I think they're like, all right, we're all gone. We're dead. Um, you got to take this girl somewhere because I'm fucked. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important to, it's that too. It's important to note that like, that's why this is, you're trying right. to get her someplace is because she's not changed. So we have Bill. Hi, Bill. Hi, Bill. How you doing, Bill? Who voice Bill? You chunky, gay, beautiful man. I love Bill. I really like the actor who played Bill. W. Earl Brown is Bill. He's um, a really nice job. I love this character. He is... Oh, my God. That's who that is? Now that I see his face, yes, oh, yeah. I know... Um. I think he is remarkable. I, I love that character. He is the perfect kind of... A- I love the asshole with a heart of gold. It's yeah. just like, mm, give it to me. Give it to me. This game had a lot of those type of characters, but did them well. Yeah. Like, it gave you a lot of tropes. It made them all feel a little bit different. Yeah. And it made everyone feel really... Everyone was really well fleshed out, even if you didn't spend a ton of time with them, which I appreciate. And it's hard to do, I think, in this type of genre, this type mm-hmm. of game. Sure. So this section really, I mean, we can glaze over this because really all this entire section is, is like kind of learning the mechanics with the clickers and everything. Yeah. Um, like there's a lot of uh, sections where you're just kind of stealthing around these things that can't see and then learning how to deal with like, okay, now this is what it's going to be like when you have a clicker and just a regular infected person. And all right, can you, how often did you die by the way in this section? All the time because I can't fucking play this game. I, I don't think I can express to you how much I died during this game. Like, okay. So first things first, the deaths are fucking brutal. Yeah. I mean, the whole, <laughs> like the whole game is brutal. Oh, I love I like. it. Like when you're, oh, the clickers just like bite your face off, right? Yeah. <laughs> so that's great. But when like the giant behemoth guy, did you die to the giant behemoth yes. guy? Oh, when he fucking rips your head open. That's amazing. Um, oh, that's just like, oh. It's amazing until it happens so like four quick. times. Oh yeah. No, it's super annoying. Yeah. Um, so playing on hard, I had a problem. So look, I acknowledge, I fucking acknowledge that the gameplay isn't great. But there is a section when you're in like that uh, uh, that hedge maze or whatever the fuck it is um, in this section where I was just like, I can't I can't fucking make it through this 
without pissing off at least one of these clickers. And because I refused to just go on a shooting spree because I had so little ammo in my in my mode, I was like, I'm just going to die. I'm just going to fucking die. And I swear, it took me almost an entire episode of our uh, of our stream to, to get just through, get through that it. shit. Just to fucking get through it. Um, You know what? It's just funny, going back to the stream thing, when I was having all those problems at the beginning of the game when you're running with Tess, I got to the point where I just let her kill everything. I was like, fine. You really? Yeah. She'll do that? Yes. Motherfucker. Well, when you can't work your fucking controller and you're just getting killed, I was like, I'm going to take a shot and hide. And eventually she'll <laughs> fucking kill him. Just in case you're wondering. Wow. I, I, shit. I, that's how I, I thought I'd... people were worthless at killing things. No, in that, in the tutorial end of things, if you wait long enough, eventually I'd be like, oh, that uh, poor, that poor sucker. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Can, <sighs> So, I don't know. I don't really care about anything else about this section no. except for one thing. What's that? The end of Bill's section when you find his his friend. No. Did you catch all of it? Did you pick up on what the story there is? Not really, I'm going to be honest. Oh, it is. So, Bill has feelings for this guy. He loves oh. him. Um, there's a... What's that character's name? Sorry, I'm trying to pull up all these characters' names. Bill or the other guy? The other guy. I think his name is Frank. Um, so, uh, Bill had feelings for this guy. They were, I don't know if he had, had feelings that they were actually like dating, whatever. But then in that last house, when you get the car, um, you find a, a letter from Frank that's just him saying, well, it looks like I fucked up. We, uh, looks like I, 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 I left, I got bit and now I'm fucked. By the way, I never fucking liked your ass. Ugh. And I was just like. Oh man! How did I not catch that? Well, because like the great thing and the heartbreaking thing is, it gives you the option of like, do you tell Bill about the note? And I just fucking gave it to him. Like I don't think I've ever not given it to him. Yeah, and I kind of feel like an asshole because like maybe, maybe the move isn't to like to let tell him, him hold on to that feeling of like they could have been together if Frank hadn't gotten bit or something. But I fucking told him. I was like, shit. You know what's interesting about games like this with the choice? Um, do you find yourself always making the quote unquote right choice, like giving the note? I always do. Like I never make the like counterintuitive Nick Westermeyer choice. So with- I, I, I have a lot of thoughts about the, um, the, uh, the uh imagination not the imagination that's a terrible fucking word the false uh presentation of choice in this game there isn't really choice like you can yeah. do things you cannot do things but at the end of the day you get the same result yeah um and and we'll get to this when we get to the end especially but for this moment in particular it's like okay i can tell him and i'll get a little like very brief like moment of dialogue where he just goes well fuck you too frank or I cannot give it to him. At the end of the day, though, he's going to help me push this car out of that garage. He's going to let me go on my way, and he's not going to go with but me. But it still affects like your world and your experience of it, and Ar- like arguably, um, especially you who was like the person who played Gone Home was like I pretended like I was opening all the doors and putting all the paper back with the phones and the stuff. Yeah, yeah, I did that. Um, <laughs> and like, yeah, like in that, but at the same time, like. There aren't very many things where you have actual choice. Yeah. And like I said, I want to save the big moment of that for the end. Um, so that being said, we are now done with uh, with Bill. We're done with Boston. Fuck you, Boston. We're moving our way out to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Um, so this is where this game took an interesting twist for me. Um, and so, you said it when we were talking in, in the pre-show stuff. So when you say an interesting twist, what do you mean? I wasn't ready for a road trip game. Oh, you you didn't know this was going to be a road trip. Didn't know it was going to be a road trip. Okay. And I like that. I was like, okay, so we're going to span distance now. So you span time and you span distance, which I thought was really great. Sure. Um, I thought that was a nice nice touch to the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought that I, I like that. I like that there's this bonding that theoretically happens off screen and also explains why you don't have to see all the little moments where they start to uh, to come together. But yeah. that fucking moment where you're going down the street because you decide to go through Pittsburgh instead of around <laughs> Pittsburgh. Like, I mean, I'm just like, okay, first of all, no, 
you've been in this world long enough. Like even I, as Chris, every man know you don't go through the fucking city. You go around the city. You will find a car with gas on the highway that you can siphon it out. Yeah, of. but then you don't progress the story. I know. I'm, you're, mm-hmm. I mean, yes, that is the narrative I mean, reason, obviously, yeah. right? But um, it's like the PUBG example. Never go through Pomorsk, go around Pomorsk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know. Did that moment give you anything when you start to see, like, this is what people are like in this world? No, because you already kind of know what people are like in this yeah, world. Yeah, you kind of figure. Um, I, I. <laughs> It's once I got to the road trip, I was like, okay, when am I going to meet my next people? When am I going to meet my next actual people? Um, and that was kind of how this game progressed for me as you get on the road. Um, so I was like, okay, yeah, we live in a shitty world. Like the world, the world's shitty, guys. The world's shitty. So the one thing in the like in that like first section, like when you uh, right after the uh, the ambush. Um, there's that moment when you go with Ellie into like that first room where they're obviously taking, uh, uh, taking stock of everything and they've taken off bodies. And I think there's a line from them, like, what kind of people would do this? Um, and, and, uh, all right, no, I think she says, how did you know that person wasn't, uh, wasn't injured? And he says, well, I've, I've been through it before on both sides. And I'm like, okay, so this is the type of person Joel's been. This is like, it took you that long to kind of realize that's who Joel was. Yeah. Yeah, it did, really? especially the first couple times that I played, um, because I'm looking at this and like, for one, I mean, it's a video game, right? Like, especially 2013, like what video games give you this nuanced type of character? Like even Max Payne is just like, okay, you are generic uh, noir See, character. It's funny because Tess making that first kill, that's when I was like, it's nuanced because even in that the good guy doesn't do that. Right. Like, and so, no, yeah, I, I don't know. I think that's good. Yeah. Like that you, like the, the fact that that's took you off guard so much shocks me. Cause I'm like, yeah, like the, like, yeah, you just shoot the, like the bad guy dies. Like that's just the way video games work. But the bad guy dies. It does. But usually you're the one that does it. And it's different then because it's a gameplay element and not a story progress like it happens so quickly. And so when when that world was set up that that's who Tess was, I kind of made the assumption that's also who Joel is because he's with her all the time. And he's also like kind of unaffected by it. He's kind of like. Oh, you know, but that moment is somebody has crossed you. And so you have to establish your dominance. These other moments are like, OK, Joel was a bad guy like he was the villain for a while and like i'm not saying that was like an astonishing reveal or anything like i put down the controls like (gasps) yeah it's like but it was one of those things like oh okay oh that's that like that is what losing your daughter does to you it's like you become willing to do this shit well i think it's i guess so for me as it it was less about losing your daughter that's part of it it's just that's the world that is the world that they are in and because if you i mean if you like the genre and you think about it which i do like that's what it becomes. Like you don't survive in this type of world unless you're that person. I hate to, I hate to be the, and I liked it. I I liked it. Well, but that's it. not true. And we find that out in the subsequent sections. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll and like, the, we'll I get think that, we'll get yeah. that coming up with that in a couple, a uh, couple moments. Um, but so I don't know, like Pittsburgh is cool. Uh, Pittsburgh is arguably my favorite section because I think it's like, it's the easiest to be okay with in my mind. Uh, it's like, okay, these are bad guys. They're very generic bad guys. They they just took over the city and they're bad guys. Okay. Um, so it's like, all right, I'm gonna kinda sneak around, get away from the bad guys. And then you meet uh you meet Henry and Sam. Oh, Henry and Sam. Motherfucker kicks you uh kicks you away. Yeah. He abandons your ass. Yeah, I know. Fuck but you. I really like the characters. So do I. But at the uh, same time, man, fuck you. Put your hand down. Yeah, I know. We've but... seen how easy it is to pull somebody up in this world. You just put your hand down, they go yoink. Tested it all the time. Listen, I didn't like hitting the triangle all the time. Um Ain't that the truth? Can so can I ask you a question? Sure. Um with with the Sam and Henry, how did well, how did you feel about the end of this little click of the story? You want to jump straight to the yeah, end? I totally do. Can we go through a little bit no, of it first? I, I like because I was that was what got me. That's what like I, I I really I really like that section where you're walking through the town though. Like because after you have I mean fuck. No, I don't even want to go there because before you go there, you have to go through the the tunnels. Yeah, that tunnels. I I think those tunnels are the best uh, environmental storytelling of the game. Really, why? Um, because it's the only time where you really get to walk around into a place where they thought that they uh they had figured it out, 
where they like, we have this perfect spot, this perfect situation. We're careful. We have traps. We have uh, redundancies. We have everything you need to survive. They even had figured out special technology for this specific type of world and that would allow them to be safer and uh, and more prepared, and it still went wrong. Yeah, but you didn't know that was going to happen? It's different. I mean, look, yes, of course I fucking know <laughs> that's going to happen. I know what a zombie movie is. Yeah. But it's the, what, what matters is how they do it. And I think that's great when you get to see it. Like, you read the notes, and they're like, I let, like... I'm I I'm here. I think I've got this safe. Okay, today I'm gonna let them in. And then there's like the okay, so we have this, and they have this person here. Like, hey, I figured out how to make this water filtration unit. And this is a really great system that'll uh, prevent us from having to go outside to collect water. And this will be safer, so all the kids and the kids can uh, can play in here sometimes. And, uh, Johnny kicked the ball and it knocked over one of the canisters. I might have to take away the ball from the kids uh, and put up a sign that says we can't play in it. And there's a sign that has all the rules for what you can and cannot do in this environment. I think it's a great, great thing. And especially once you start to get towards the end of it and you find out it's like everybody died except for him, except for was it Ish Ishmael, I believe was his probably his full name. Ish gets away and like one or two other people and that's it. And then there's that room where it's like the guy had killed his kids cause they got infected or like he, he killed his kids cause he knew they were going to die of starvation. And so he let them die quick instead of slowly. Yeah. Again, oh. I guess, I guess because I, I like, I'm it's the genre. So I'm like, Oh right, yeah. 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 That, that sucks. Yeah. That, I here. mean, why even bother playing a game in the genre? If you're just like, it all doesn't matter. No, because there was times in this game where it didn't do that, where I appreciate that it didn't use a lot of the same tropes that I was ready, that I thought was coming. That was one of those things where it's like, Oh, they find a safe spot. Except it's the farm. Well, from but they don't to... find the safe. No. Cause it's not the farm. Yeah, cause, the, it's, it's, cause gone. it's already gone. Yeah. It's already like, you're right. In this world, you know it doesn't work because you see it's already dead. Yeah, and you've already... But finding out why it didn't work Okay, uh, I mean, in the future, I think that's what made it beautiful. Maybe maybe I would have appreciated like, it more if I wasn't trying to get through the game. I, You know what I mean? Again, sure. I, should, I have to be honest, it was a push for me to get through it. And so there was a lot of like... I Sounds make, like you just skipped a lot of the game to try and I I did it. because I wanted to get through it. And I think that like so while I appreciate the environment and the storytelling, and again, I think that's why you'll find that a lot of the major events are things that I liked, mm-hmm. like when you're in the car, but like a lot oh, of these see, nuances it's the little things I found. And again, phenomenal. I think because I was trying to push it in a week and a half. Sure. Um But Anyway, but that's probably why I wanted to talk about, you know, Henry and Sam, because um, that's the thing that resonates, right? It's a major plot point. Well, but to get to Henry and Sam, like the big uh, thing at the end, you have to go through like the town. Like they play darts. Did you play? get the plane? Did you play darts? Nope. God damn, Nick. Why are they even friends at this point? Because I had to get through the fucking game. They, it's like, all right, well, I guess they're friends now because that's what video game. So there's a beautiful moment yeah. in that town where they find a dart board and, uh, and the kids decide to play a game of darts and they're talking shit. And uh, Ellie's like, oh, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to dominate you. And then Sam's just like throws the darts and then whatever. And then like they play. I don't even remember who wins because it doesn't fucking matter because it's kids getting to be kids in this town. It's the establishment of relationships. Safe. It's so beautiful. And of course, and there's a fun joke at the end of like, there's one dart left and Joel just walks over, picks it up, throws the dart and like hits five feet off from the dart board. <laughs> like, yep. Motherfucker can throw a Molotov cocktail and hit but you in the head. Throw, can't throw a, a fucking dart. dart. Dude, darts are hard, man. I've never played really. You've never played darts? I've never really played Shit's darts. Shit's hard. There's like, like a whole... I've thrown a couple darts, but I've never actually like tried to play it's darts. It's hard. It's hard. I digress. Um, so, okay. Fucking. All right. So we've, we've taken out the, so we've, we, we've been ambushed by the bad guys. They found us again. They have their tank thing. We sneak our ass up to the sniper. We get the sniper. We shoot the guy in the, in the tank and we kill everybody. Blah, 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 blah. Gameplay, gameplay, gameplay. Man, I thought those were great moments. I love that sniper gun. That sniper. Do you rifle. love Steph's? I, I wish I could have loved it. Um, so here's, okay. I gotta, I gotta get into like, the Henry Sam thing and why I like this so much. Cause I think the thing that affects me more in video games and kids, I like brother stories. Um, cause I have a bunch of them. Sure. Um, so 
This is the part of the game that got me. Like of all the parts. Really? The, yes. This is the one part where I was like, yep, you that's don't have, what happens. How do I like, you don't have a brother. I mean, you have me, but like, you don't care if I kill myself. I mean, no, I'm just like. In video games. Huh? I don't know. At this point, like the first time I, I played it, I think I was like, wow, fuck. I don't know. I was like, yeah, of course the kid gets it. And, and Henry shoots himself. Like for me, the biggest thing was like, fuck, is Henry going to shoot us? Is he just going to go crazy? And like, is Joel going to get shot or something here? I just, there to me, it had, it was this moment of you have, so like you have Joel who essentially loses everything. Right. But sure. continues to go on and function. Like he, he makes a life in this situation. Um, Henry doesn't like that was that was it and that there was such a finite loss to that for me playing this game that it like it really struck me in a way that a lot of other parts of this game didn't because you're always still kind of moving right you're moving through like and you're in your encompassing characters who, who kind of are or moving or if they die it's in the progression of your story to get you to get you to your end game and this was just a moment of like hope like literally the hope it's gone it's just sure gone and so that really affected me because you just realize like that person that character that had nothing left like that was it that was that was their reason for existing And even in joel like joel loses his daughter but still finds a reason to exist yeah um and now you have a character that doesn't it's it's definitely one of the more touching deaths in the in the game um, and I should also point out that uh, the performance of Henry, especially yeah. by the guy from Lost, I think his name's uh, Brandon Scott. Oh, look, I like knowing who the actor other dudes. It is Brandon Scott. I'm looking at it here. Is it okay? Um, obviously, he, oh he, shit, he that was, is the guy from Lost. You couldn't tell just by looking at the model. No. Yeah. All right. Um, he does a really great job selling that moment. Yeah, too. he does. Because, like, like I said, like I legitimately think, oh my god, he's of course he's not going to kill you because duh, you have more video game. Um, but I, I didn't think that because this fucking game, you don't know. You don't know. You, you really don't. You really don't um, know. This might be the end of the game for you. Um, but yeah, that, I, that was a really good, uh, good performance by those guys. Um, so, uh, kind of the last, so there is actually one little more little moment, uh, for Sam and Henry. And did, did you catch it? Probably not. No, probably. You, you skipped everything. Yeah, not um, everything, just a lot of stuff. So, uh, once you get to the uh, the the dam section, um, you're you're looking for your your brother. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, Tommy. Tommy. Oh, Tommy. And so you're walking around through the woods, and uh, there's one section especially where uh, if you take a left and you go over a log, you find a, a grave for a child. And Ellie drops the uh, uh, sets down the the toy doll that that she got for Sam. Um, mm-hmm. She wanted to. She I think I can't remember if they did or didn't bury them because they explain it here. But she says I I I I wanted to leave it for him and I forgot. Um, and so she leaves it at this kid's uh a little grave. Um, and they have a little conversation where like Ellie's trying to talk to him about it and and he refuses. Like no, you just don't do that. Like. You just don't fucking talk about it. That's how you survive in this world. Did you like Ellie? I love Ellie. Okay. I fucking adore Ellie. And so much that there's actually one thing that we've skipped here that I, I probably should have started talking about by now. I I liked Ellie so much that as Joel, I went out of my way to try and find every single comic book. Because <laughs> like, even though I know I, I, I didn't know no, but I kind of figured it wasn't going to make any difference in the story. But I like she was getting so much joy out of those comic books. I was like, I want you to have this. This world fucking sucks. I want you to have every goddamn comic book because you deserve it. Okay. Um, I take it you didn't? No, I did. I just was wondering. So I always am very curious in games, especially as we're dads now to kind of bring this in some of a parenting element. If it being the father daughter element has more of an effect on you as a game player, especially now. I, I loved Ellie before I you had did? a okay. daughter. Um, um, cause for me, Ellie is the, I, I like the character of Ellie because she is the kid that I think most of us wanted to be. She's tough. She's funny. She's charismatic. She's loving. She's quick witted. She's sharp tongued. 
Um, and she gets it. Like she, she sees through the bullshit, even when she doesn't see through the bullshit. Like she knows Joel is trying to abandon her. Um, you get to the fucking, uh, to the dam and she just sees through your shit. She's like, like you pull Tommy aside. I was like, look, I got you. I need you to take care of this kid for me. Like take her to the, to the fireflies. You're better at this. You can do it. I can't. And the second you even remotely start to bring it up with her, she just goes, no, fuck you. You're just trying to be like, I've been abandoned by fucking everybody. And now you're going to do it to me. And I'm like, fucking right. He is going to do it. Like, I'm glad you fucking to- called him out on this shit. Yeah. I, I liked her too. I've just, yeah, I, I guess I liked her. I was just curious, like if it, if it has a different effect on you as a dad, with it being a daughter as it would have been like yes, for me. It does also. Yeah. Um, and, I, and we will talk about that very shortly. Yeah. Um, cause there were moments where I like, like just thinking about it right now, I'm about to cry. Yeah. Cause, um, cause I would say, I'll be honest when it's a father son relationship, I have, it is way more effective affecting on me than a father daughter because I don't have a daughter. Yeah. I have a son. Um, um, like listen, Coco wrecks me. Um, like that opening definitely like it, it hit me harder this time. Um, mm-hmm. when, when Sarah gets shot, um, cause I'm like, fuck, you can't. Like there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Like you've done everything. You've turned your back. You try to shield her. You do everything that you would do as a father and you just, you, you fail and mm-hmm. you fucking fail. Like you did everything to save their, to save that girl and the world still takes her from you. And that's uh, that. Yeah. No, that, that super destroyed me this time. Yeah. Um, I would be, I would love to know if we maybe we'll come to a game of this, of this way, if you're that affected by a father son relationship as a father daughter relationship, or if that has a element of your game playing again, cause I know it does for me. Um, yeah. cause it's just easier for me to put my kid in that place. Right. Um, I like that. It's a, it's, I like that it's a girl, not a boy. I think that it just, we need those kind of characters in games. Sure. Um, but anyway, I just want to guess we've really touched on like, do you like LA? We've talked a lot about Joel, but not a lot right. about LA. I thought it was an interesting dynamic between tommy and joel though which i think is a really interesting relationship to talk about okay um Um, you you talk because i don't really have much to say so i just well no it's just like (laughs) actually i do have something to say about it so you a little while ago you said that um this is a world where good people can't survive and this is a, a, a demonstration that that's that's not true like tommy is the good in the world like tommy is the guy who decided I don't want to kill. I don't want to, I don't want to be a villain. I don't want to be a hero. I just want to be, I just want to exist with my family and my, my group of people. And I want to survive in this world. And he does it. He has a community. He has people with skills and they labor over it and then they, they make it work. So, yes. And I, I thought that was really interesting. The, the parting ways of Tommy and Joel. Um, sure. And you know what, two sides of the same coin like you said but that doesn't mean that Tommy doesn't do some fucked up shit before to get to that point and that's kind of what I mean like I mean yeah I'm yes I'm sure he uh, the, I, I'm sure they did some shit but at the same time he also pretty quickly says like nope not gonna do that he shit he makes a very different world for himself he also makes a very distinct point of pointing out like no I wasn't gonna do it I just wasn't going to do it and you wanted to do it and you can do it but I wasn't going to do it and how they survive in this world I really like that because within this the point of the game that I liked about this with, with Tommy and Joel as you see and this is something you brought up now is um, the dichotomy of choice and while I think that that doesn't mean Tommy's a good person that Tommy made good choices going through because I just don't think in the context of this world you can do that I think that that is, I think the game makes it very clear that while you can have a different endpoint to get to that endpoint, choices are hard, the world is hard, and it will be difficult. Um, And I think you see that in Tommy in the beginning of the game, just trying to get them through the, with Sarah, like just the very beginning, who, what, get that point of the game but sure i did like seeing that i caught the brother that kind of like how do you turn out right like who are the people that you become what i liked about that especially was that you can see how like with different choices joel could have been tommy yeah he chooses not to he chooses because of the um the the depth of frustration and pain and misery that he feels he he didn't go the way of tommy he went the way of joel um and subsequently he 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 becomes the the bad guy yeah i again i don't think joel's a bad guy i guess it's how you what context you put it in i think tommy made a life 
I think that's what's interesting. It doesn't make it doesn't mean I think Tommy's a good or bad guy. I think Tommy figured out how to make an actual life in this world, whereas I don't think Joel did. Joel Joel survived. Tommy lives. Sure. Does that make sense? Sure. Um, I don't think it has to do with them being good or bad. I think it has to do with what you wanted to make this world, whereas Tommy didn't lose what Joel did. Um, I don't so, think it makes Tommy a good guy or a bad guy. Sure. Or Joel a good guy or a bad guy, ultimately. So the subsequent scene at the, the farmhouse um, is kind of where everything changes, right? Yeah. Um, it's where Joel decides he's going to accept the responsibility uh, that he's going to take it on. And deliver De- Ellie, essentially. Deliver. I, do you think that he really plans to? Uh, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Um, I'm, I'm peppering where this conversation's going. I know. Um, so d- is there anything you want to say about this scene? Does it feel earned to you? Let's start there. Oh, that's a good question. Yes, I do. I think that the story leads up to enough and you're investing in the characters enough that it does. Okay. So, um, we're really, actually, I should point out, we're really getting to the point of the game that I was like, I was in it. I was like, yeah, these are the, like the previous parts I think were my favorite gameplay wise. Look, I, don't, I know you don't like the game. Yeah. These are the parts where I really love the story. Yeah. Cause this is where you really start to feel for the, I mean, look, this section that comes up next is the fucking section. Oh, right? I know the next two sections, which is really one section, but we'll get there. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I've always kind of been unsure whether I feel like it's earned, but more and more, especially playing it through the second time, I think it is because I also found the last comic book that I've always missed in that farmhouse because I've always raced right up there to her because I was so, like, I've always been so absorbed in that moment that I'd never think to look around the house fully. And so this time, because I played it like four or five You were able to now, actually do that? And I found the fucking comic book that's right inside the door. I want my comic books. Um, no, oh my God. Like, when I got that achievement, I almost started crying. I was like, she finally has them all. She's finally happy. <laughs> I did it. I did um, it. And of course, there's no cha- like story adjustment or anything. It's just like, yeah, okay, cool. It's, it's an achievement. It's something that you get to take pride in. Yeah, it, it, like that is a little bit of world building that I made up. That's in my own personal head. I really, well, yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, I think like that was something that really impacted me this time around where I'm like, after she gives that monologue about like, is this really all they had to fucking think about boys and whatever? And like, oh, God damn it. Like, yeah, what the I world is versus like, what it this was is the moment where he's really sitting there going like, shit, this is, this is the girl my daughter would be right now if she was still alive. Um, like, like that is who my daughter was and this is who my daughter would be. And I think that's the moment where he's just finally decides like, all right, I'm in. Do you think um, in terms of the, the, the story, right? The, the, the developers of this game that this was the best moment to put that in. I do. Um, That he's in and around the world that Tommy's in seeing who Tommy is. And then to have this have, it's good storytelling, right? Like it all kind of like gels together nicely. I mean, I, they did a great job of setting up that that realization because they do show you that picture of Sarah um, at the start of this section. They do put that thought in your head of like Joel is a like the reason why he's having so many problems is because of his daughter. And you know that. I mean, and, it, and you know that yeah. innately, but they really make sure to drive that home before that barn scene, mm-hmm. so that you really do make that connection of like, okay, when she gives this monologue about how she's not Sarah you realize that's the moment where he also realizes like, no, you totally are. Yeah. I mean, and you know that as a, as a game player in it. Yeah. Um, so should we, should we move on to, um, the next, the, the school? Yeah. The firefly base. Yeah. That isn't. Um, so on the stream for the record, there's uh, a little bit of gameplay missing here. A little bit of important. Oh, is this when you had, I had some issues with, uh, with my capture setup. Um, I, I had to do a lot of, uh, I don't know, whatever, figuring out, uh, I lost a little bit of gameplay here, nothing too important, but this is like, I don't know. I got the fucking school. So the reason you know that he's not going to abandon her here, I think is because they think he, he, uh, as they're pulling up here the first time they go, Hey, you know, if, if we don't like it here, we'll turn around and leave. Uh, like we don't have to stay. <laughs> Not <laughs> a big <laughs> deal. Here's some story telling they'll for you. you. They'll prod you, and then we'll go. Um, so, how did you moving to this point? How did you feel about the fireflies building up to this point in the game? So, 
I don't know. I didn't give two shits, really. Like, to be honest, with, like it's hard for me to go back to the first time I played the game with the Fireflies because I probably was like, they're the good guys. Okay. Um, But, like, I don't know. The more, like, playing through it a few more times now, I'm like, eh, whatever. They're the... They're kind of like the the other guys, right? Like, I kind of look at them now as like they're not the like like this isn't Star Wars. It's not the Empire and the Rebellion. It's like I don't know. It's rival gangs, and everybody kind of sucks. Yeah, it's funny because I when they introduced the idea of like you have to get this girl to the Fireflies, I was like, that's not going to be good. That's not going to be. Good. I mean, plays like this isn't going to end well for me. It's I think in my good. head, I thought like this was the last remnants of the government of like the what the new government was going to be. Yeah, um, like these are the good guys. These are the people who are going to save the day. Oh, see, I was like, I did not. I was like, this is not going to end well. And I think, admittedly, they are. But we'll get there. Yeah, um, which is again, we'll get there because it's a beautiful part of this game. So, um, for like, I don't know. I feel like just kind of largely jumping through this. Um, so it's we're at the school. More road trippy stuff too. We're at the school. You're looking around. You find some stuff. You see what college would have been like in this world, oh, yeah. and it's kind of cool. Um, and then you uh, you find out that they're not there because of fucking monkeys. Please tell me you got the fucking tapes. You didn't get the fucking tapes. Sorry, dude. So I- what happens is while they're testing out, uh, trying to figure out the disease, they have some test monkeys. The monkeys that you see running around. Oh, they're test monkeys. Okay. Um, and they, they were, were going to kill all the test monkeys before they leave, but they don't kill all the test monkeys before they leave. And so uh, the doctor who had been testing on them was like, fuck, I want to save your lives. And as he's letting them out, one of them bites him. And so he kills himself. The monkeys go free. And all of those, uh, 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 what the fuck are they? The, not the clickers, but like the, I don't know, all the people with the disease, uh, those are all the fireflies that those monkeys got. Oh. So it's, uh, at one point or another, they say it's a good thing we didn't, uh, touch those. Mo- oh, it's because it's right after you listen to one of the recordings that they say it. So I should point out, we've gotten to this, that, um, I've already started to replay this game. For, oh, that, cool. for that exact reason. Oh, I lost my reference stuff. Um, for that exact reason, because I knew there was a lot that I missed. Yeah. Um, I've, I have restarted <clears throat> playing the game because I did like it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's good to know. I know what to look for now. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. Like, just fucking look everywhere. That's that's, yeah. that's really the answer. That's how you get all the good story stuff. Um, um, so, I don't know. Fucking bad guys show up. You have to fight bad guys in the hospital because they're, I don't know, they're Cause, fucking cause raiding you, the hospital. Because you, you need some bad guys to progress the story. So... Did you expect to fall? <laughs> no. No, I didn't. It was no like I've had like there's like six points in this game where I was like, what the fuck? That was one of them. Uh-huh. Um, so did you expect to fall the first no, time? No, I was okay. like, what the fuck? And then I fell, I was like, wait, because it has it does that hard cut. And I'm like, wait, is this how the game ends? Yeah, did you think you died? Is this I was how the like, game ends? I was like, I died. This is the uh-huh. I didn't think it was over because I knew like the game wasn't set up that much, though. It would have been really fucking good. Because the game had been going on just long enough. It's like, this could be a short game that just ends here. I w- that would have been kind of cool, actually. Um, no, but it definitely... It threw me for... I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, another point in these games where I was like, what the fuck? Where do I go? What's... Oh, fuck. And um, I like that Ellie gets to show that she is perfectly capable then. It's like, look, I can not only save my, protect myself, but I can, I can protect, protect you. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was a, a really good moment. Um, like, was especially like she's getting attacked while you're stumbling around, like you, you're trying to do whatever. And she's like, I'm going to shoot this guy jumping over the railing. I'm going to shoot this guy. I'm going to take a punch and I'm still going to shoot his ass. Well, it also shows what a child, when we talk about, because you see before, like what a child is going to be like in this world. And then you move into what that child is, right? And right. you see, like, the child is as capable to take care of herself as Joel is. And that's the only way she survives in this world besides being immune to zombies. Sure. Um, so um, for the record, this is the the time frame where the DLC takes place. Um, okay. When she's okay. So right after the, she gets him on the, the horse, this is where the DLC takes place um, because you haven't played it and you're going to play it. I, I won't ruin it for you. Um, but I'll just say that it, it's uh, it's a split time frame game. Uh, it takes place before you meet Joel and during this section. Okay. Um, but as we do the jump into winter uh, or into more winter, I guess. Um, Did you like the big big uh, portion of playing as Ellie? 
I loved it. It's my favorite part yeah, of the game. Yeah, I did too, actually. So, like I said, like it is the part that fucks with me the most because of like for one it's a kid because and- because of um what's his name? I think his name is James. Is well, it James? I, I have it up. Hold on. Um, so yes, it is James. No, it's David. It's Nolan North as David. Okay. That's the guy. Fucking David. He is the villain of my dreams. Like he will haunt me as like as a father. Every uh, every grown ass man who's nice to my daughter, I'm gonna be like. If you, you no, fucking Nolan, you're da- David. I'm gonna fucking stab you. I'm gonna stab I'm you gonna in cut the it. face. Um, so the hunting scene. Did you? I mean, uh, the hunting scene. I, I, I'll be honest. I think it's cool story building. I fucking hated it. Yeah. yeah. Running around chasing the blood trails, like the yeah. deer, the deer, the deer, the deer. Um, I think that scene with you and David and Ellie uh, trying to play hard. I thought that was a great it's moment. It's a crazy... No, this whole section of the game is fucking fantastic. Sorry. I have a little review just to keep everything fresh. Sure. And like, that performance, I agree. Great villain. Um, The hunting scene, it's funny. I didn't bother me that much. But at this point, like, I was so engrossed into what was going on that... So the first time I played it, I loved it because, like, you're, you're Ellie. And so it's, like, you kind of coming to terms with, like, shit, I'm Ellie now. And also not knowing quite what's going to happen with Joel. There was that kind of floating in the right. air. Like, so it changed the story dynamic of what's happening. Kind of a different... In some ways, it's kind of a different game in this little section, which I liked. I mean, until you, uh, you ask for penicillin that's the first time you know that joel is still alive yeah but is he gonna make it that's what i didn't know for sure right and i like that it threw me off on that Yeah, because it it gives you that moment like fuck like i'm ellie now i it's just this what the rest of the game's gonna be which i kind of for a second i thought it was going to be which would have been an interesting choice i guess sure um so you didn't like the hunting scene on the second playthrough though uh i didn't like the i would say i didn't like the hunting scene on the we have fourth or fifth playthrough. Oh, you played this a lot. I have played this game. I that's how I can sit here without seeing every like yeah. having a walkthrough and know exactly. Because I had to like I have you, I know where everything yeah. is in this game. I, have, like, I know what all the story beats are. I don't remember the names because I'm bad with names. No, I I know a lot about this game at this point. I've only played uh, Left Behind twice though. Okay, the DLC. All right. Um. So I don't know. Is there anything else you want to say about that part uh, leading up to the reveal of who David is? No, that's fine. Um, um, I so, liked it. That was good. Story. I really like, I just enjoyed being Ellie. I think it was, I was really uh, not languishing, lavishing in the gameplay as Ellie. Um, it was a nice yeah. change. I think it's a fun moment when you, uh, I shouldn't say a fun moment. It's a terrifying moment when you realize who David is, um, that he is, uh, arguably the leader of the people that you kind of slaughtered at the the school um and that he is so cool that he's smart enough that he's going to set a trap for you that he's going to let you go with the medicine which is incredibly uh, uh vital to his community because he knows you will immediately lead them back right to where you need to go yeah. it's um he to me is I'll reference The Walking Dead a little bit because I think it's he's the kind of Negan-ish character. You're like, you're such a good villain. And See, he, I think of him as the uh, governor, the governor, yeah. because he's so manipulative. So is Negan, though. Um, That's different I've seen, I'll be honest. I have I've, I haven't seen any of the Negan episodes on oh, the TV. The- I've read them up until there's an issue in the the comic books where um, he and Andrea were uh, uh, fucking Rick and Andrea um sit down and rick admits that he has a plan and that's the last issue i read okay um but it's it's that really perfect uh post-apocalyptic villain right the smart one that survives because they're so fucking evil because they're evil and charismatic and they can make people believe them um yeah yeah that's fucked yeah no i (laughs) I mean but he's a great it's a so it's that the the moment that gives me chills is that moment where Ellie is in the jail cell and um David is trying to convince her to to help him save her. And he's basically saying, like, if you become my uh my little princess, I will uh I will make you part of this community. You will thrive. As he's like as they're chopping people up to eat behind them, uh and you can like, oh, you are going to like, you are going to take this as your child bride. You're going to take Ellie as your 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 sex toy, pet, whatever. 
and like she she's too smart for it. like she knows like this shit's yeah. happening and i'm going to fucking like bite off your finger i'm going to do whatever i have to to survive I'm like oh it's so fucking good oh and the so, second she goes like i'm infected and they all get terrified of because of what it could she, mean already you see how smart she oh, is too and like so good that's why like i keep so much this game I'm, i really like i could just watch it i could just fucking watch it and like well, i guess i could because you recorded that well i mean they're yes yeah and also they're talking about making a, a movie out of it I, they have know, numerous times they but. are talking about it. it's in production i was looking at oh, it. Is it i was looking now? at while we okay. were talking um it, it's so well set up um oh sorry it's so well set up um what did you think of James? Sorry, I, I want to come back because I really like the actor that played James. Um, Who the fuck is James? He's the one that's with David. Hold on, let me bring him up. When um, you encounter David, you encounter David at the beginning. He's with James. Uh, where's the actor? Oh, it's the guy in the wild. Yes. Oh my I god. No, fuck him. Really? Oh, yeah. I thought the actor did such a good job in it. I don't know. Fuck him. He's just some okay. dude. Well, then never mind. Why? What did you have some affinity for? Yeah, him? I just I just thought the actor did a really good job, and I thought it was such a nice nuanced character to add, as opposed to just meeting the one guy. Like, here's your big villain. Though you have like kind of, kind of a foil and kind of an extra person. I thought he was just a fun like. I don't know. I thought the only cool thing about James was that it shows how manipulative David is. That he tells the guy to stand down, even though he has the upper hand, oh. knowing that he could uh, send them after to to follow him. Sorry, I, I just, I really thought the guy did such a good... Yeah, that's great. It's Sorry. great. Anyway, it's great. clearly it didn't touch you as much as it did, nope. so fine. Um, it's all good. Uh, so I kind of skipped forward to this a little bit, but how did you enjoy the, uh, like, once you're on the, I don't know, I'm going to call it the shore town. Yeah. Um, how did you enjoy... So that is, for, for me, like, I think I did really bad at it this time on the stream, but it is one of my favorite gameplay sections. Um, it's not the best section, but because you get to play as Ellie, because you're in a town, because you are in this beautiful, serene setting, and largely you have that fucking knife, so every stealth kill is quick. Um, oh, it's so good. Because I was like, oh, I go through there and I just like like picking everybody off with the bow. One at a time. Right behind them, that stab bow. them. I love the bow. The bow is amazing. It is really good. It's a good bow. Um. I liked it. I will say that at this point, the gameplay had gotten easier. Because um, you've leveled shit up. And leveled shit up and, I, and I'm used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah you know, yeah, video cool. games. I liked it. I, I mean, I don't like. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. You that's I mean? fine. Sorry. That's, uh, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, So Joel wakes up. Anything you want to talk about with the Joel section here? <gasps> oh, yes. What do you want to talk about? The, the torture scene? Yeah. What? Oh, it's so good. That is the moment where I'm like, I would do this. You're like, like I would fuck your shit there up. There is very little in this game where I'm like, I can see myself doing that in a dire circumstance. But once I was like, Ellie's captured. He has two hostages that he has he has found from them. Like, yeah, no, if you stole my daughter and I thought there was any possibility of harm happening to her. No. Yeah. I would break I'd, your nose. I would, shit up. I would do all of the worst torture that I could come up with. Yeah. I mean, it didn't, it's so hard. Cause like that shit, like I liked it. Cause again, you, there's a lot of satisfaction. In it. it probably says a lot about me. Um, it's kind of like, uh, what you said about, uh, a test earlier, where it's like, this is the, like, yeah, no, this is the, like, this is the moment where I was like, this is the Joel from yeah. who Joel used to be finally coming out in the full. It's like, you fucked with my dog. Like, I, I am going to, pull every it's, fucking it's trick the melding of the two worlds right like who joel was versus who joel is so it's, sure. it's taking the old joel which is a really nice storytelling element and building it with what the world has done to him i don't know if old joel before the world would do that in this way sure but the new joel or the joel that we know and have gone with fuck yeah he will because as you say like he's not a quote-unquote good person right um i also just <laughs> There's some points in games where, again, it makes me a bad person. Like, you just take some, like, fuck you, man. After everything you've dealt with with Ellie and going through those scenes where you just get mm -hmm. to, like, reap some, like, vindication on some guys. And I kind of enjoyed it. Running it's the punisher element. Running around that town and basically invisibility because of all the snow and fog and just, like, everybody's dead. Like, instantly everybody's dead because like you just walk up to them like i'm gonna kill you now 
I think you oh, said this so too. Good. It's such a good environmental level in the game, though. Yeah. I will say that. That I, I liked I like the environment the game set. The game did that good throughout, though. Mm-hmm. The, the level environments of this game are fantastic. It's so foreboding in a way. Like, a part of me wonders if they just weren't able to finish this level, so they went fucking snowstorm. Snowstorm, no. you don't get to see anything. It's just fucking... I think you kind of need this level, though, in the game, where it's an easier snipe. It's an easier... Where you just need to go through and, like... Where you finally feel like the supreme badass. Yes. I think it was... Maybe that's why I liked it, because it finally... Or at least gameplay-wise, it finally felt like I could do something easily and effectively. Right. And I got a little, like... Hopefully you've been able to level up some of your weapon, your bow. Yeah. Like for me, it's just fucking my bow at this point is fully leveled or it's your near thing. fully level. And so I'm like, all right, I'm going to mow over these guys. I'm going to choke them. I'm going to stab. I'm going to do everything I can and just murder everybody. And sometimes you need an e- like not this, not that it's easy, but you need an easy level in the game. Sure. I think that was what because you're about to move into. We entered the end game now in the fucking boss fight. Oh, the OK. This boss fight. Oh, I've I look. I have died to this boss many, many times until I think this last time because I was. Look, you I know what you know what's going point. on. Like I know to avoid the glass on the floor. I know where the glass on the floor is. I know how far to I stay away from that. them. I I died a lot, but that was such a nice touch and a nice like element that you had to deal with within the game. Uh-huh. I thought that was really nice um yo yeah no it's really good because it's all about creating sound so like you throw a brick you know exactly where he's gonna go he pokes his head up you just walk right up behind him and stab him in the the neck oh it's so good it's so it feels so good when you're just like i'm just going to run up and i'm going to stab the shit out of you and then there's like that final one where he's like i am just like i think he pulls out his hatchet or whatever and he's super stealthy trying to be really quiet and silent or whatever and like it's hard for you to find him oh it's so so good when you just finally kill him and the and then like that that fucking cut scene after uh after you finally beat him and joel and you and joel's gotten to you and everything and you're just like stabbing him in the face you with that. really wanted that oh my god i don't think i can describe to you how badly i wanted this guy to die and how good i felt when she was killing him and how awful i felt when she just collapses into joel's arms like that is like when she a, becomes a kid again essentially yeah. and the like the yeah. the weight of what you've done has taken hold uh-huh um, so we have the end game and this is the the uh, the beautiful part the like this is when the the game gets pretty yeah um so you're finally here you're in salt lake city salt lake city yes um so I don't know. What is what what do you want to talk about uh leading up before we get to the hospital? What do you want to talk about? So this is the thing where I like the firefly part. Like understand who they were and getting into their environment. I I so I kind of knew where this was going. I kind of knew from the beginning what this was going to be. Wait, you're jumping straight to the Fireflies? Yeah. All right. Let so, me take we, over again. We've been talking forever. Um, yeah, yeah. Look, we took two months. They can, like, we need an hour and a half <laughs> um, on this episode. So, um, so I want to talk about the giraffes. Okay. The giraffes. Because okay. that's, that's like the most important uh, moment of this entire thing, right? Like, arguably, it's the most important moment because it's the moment where Ellie is having second thoughts. Yeah. Where she's like, is this something I want to do? Am I willing to um, basically give up Joel? Because at this point, she's probably still thinking, like, Joel may leave me after this. Do you think she think that's still in her head? I think there's an, a... The nugget, the nugget. nugget. The, cu- the kid thing where, like, you never have that full security. Well, not even that. It's the idea of, like, he tried to do it last time. Like, this is what our entire trip has been about. Yeah. Like, if I go, is he going to leave? And then Joel reassures her, no, like he just sees it in her and he says, no, look, we don't have to go. We don't have to do this. And after that, she realizes, no, he's, he's here for me. Let's go. They, they're family. It's the yeah. beginning of the family. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so seeing those giraffes, that's a beautiful moment where like, she's so downtrodden and depressed and they just like, they come out of nowhere to just kind of ease her pain. I will say though, how long did you sit there and stare at the drafts? Wait a minute. 
they eventually get, they just get caught in the corner. Oh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, really I, didn't, I didn't stay that long. It is really funny because they just like, if you sit there long enough, because it's such a beautiful moment that each time I just sit there and I watch it as long as I can. And then like, they're like, they walk off into the distance in the corner and like, you're supposed to leave, right? You're supposed to leave, but I stay in a stare. And so like, you can see like the game doesn't have a plan for them because there's a cinematic afterwards where like you see them still walking. Well, they or probably whatever. plan on like me where you you kind of take it in and right. then you move on. You move on to the game because you know you're at the end. You want to get through this fucking game. It's one of the few moments in this thing where you're like, I'm gonna uh, like I. You can see the the game being a game instead of a like this beautiful cinematic story. Only because you waited too long. Exactly. Um, All right, so let's get to the part that you want. Okay, so I just want to point out, so something that I mentioned earlier we were talking about is like what the fireflies are, right? And sure. so I think when you go into this game, you have two thoughts on this. You have the thought where you're like, well, they're just kind of the government, or they're just kind of, what would you say? They're not the empire? They're, they're, the, not... they're, they're the new government. It's yeah. what the government will become. It's They're not so, the government. They're not actually the, the rebellion. They're just something in between. And so... <laughs> And maybe, again, it's because I've read books in the genre. I like the genre. I mean, they're like, she's immune. You got to get to these people. And they seem like the good like the good guys or the good-ish guys. All my mind was like, no, they're not. This is not going to end well for us. And so I had this moment of just for just dread the whole time you're progressing to get there of like, no, this we don't want to go there. Because I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew this wasn't going to end well for them because it never does it never does and Mm -hmm. so but still that moment of being like oh you're gonna take her from me and i'm not gonna get her back i had that 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 moment that you're feeling right now i had that moment at the um i I don't know i had a different moment i I, I guess i'm just trying to segue into this because i don't want to talk about that quite yet yeah um i think there's a great moment after the uh uh in the sewers or in the subway or whatever Mm -hmm. Um, in the tunnel where the water, like when Ellie is drowning and you're trying to save her and it's a call back to the very first scene where, uh, your daughter dies as you're trying to save her. And there are people who are supposed to be there to help you that are going to end up hurting you. And it's like, he still refuses to stop. Um, it's like, I, you can shoot me. Like, I know you want me to stop and you're going to shoot me and everything, but I have to save her. Yeah. Um, I think I, I, I like that. I think that's a really touching moment like it was a touching moment for me anyway going back to what you want to talk about with the fireflies um it was one of those things where i didn't see it coming Uh, really i so are you telling me you saw them like sorry we have to kill her yeah oh god yes from the minute that she was from the minute that she was like yeah because that's the trope and i i saw a possibility of they're the bad guys i saw a possibility of um, like there's some kind of a thing that's going to happen that you have to, um, like I, look, I figured the game wasn't over yet. I thought maybe it was going to get run over by like the super villains or whatever, but I didn't see the, uh, Ellie, uh, Ellie's is the cure and they have to kill her to get the cure. Yeah. That was something that was in the back of my mind from the very beginning of this game. And that's why getting to this point, I had so much dread because, you're progressing towards an inevitable end. Um, Mm -hmm. And I didn't, in this thing, I didn't know what the game was going to do though. I didn't know what the outcome of it was going to be. And that's what made it so, well, we'll get to that. I mean, we're kind of there now, aren't we? Yeah. So you go on a fucking rampage. (laughs) Um, Tell me about your rampage, Nick. What was your experience for the rampage? It was pretty other than I died. Um, oh, I died. So here's the problem that I found out. So when I was playing on hard, I think the, uh, the problem is I probably had played on easy or had just been playing like normal pro- Probably what I was playing. What I normally did was I did the thing that I'd done throughout the entire games. I had my bow out and it's I just felt people used the bow. I know I did. I've always done it that way. And this time I finally like after like not being able to make it past the first room, I was just like. I'm going to try out this new gun that I've never used before. Like you get the new gun. It's obviously like, Hey, you should use this new gun. It's a really good gun. You want to use you want this gun. Take the moment and use the gun. And so I finally picked up the gun, like mowing people over. Like, 
Oh, that's what this section's supposed to be. It's, I always thought it felt a little weird when you're like... Because they're trying to get you through it, right? Yeah, they're trying to make you have that sense of urgency of like, you have to get there now. You don't have to get there now, but you have to yeah. get there so now. So I did the same thing you did, is I started off trying to use the bow and be stealthy, and then I went and got the gun after I died like five times. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then I felt pretty vindicated in my in my choice. Because, <laughs> again, I I just wanted to get where I needed to get, right? Sure. Um, I did love that gun, though. All right. So here is the moment in the game that, uh, now I'll admit, uh, over the years, uh, this is the moment that I've heard the most uh, criticism b- about. Really? Why? Um, What's the criticism? So there is a discussion over agency in the video game. Mm-hmm. And by that, I mean you you are left with the power to pull the trigger or not pull the trigger. Okay. And so you walk into the room where Ellie is about to be uh, uh, to be whatevered. She's about to be operated right on. on. Yeah. Um, sacrificed. And you and like it doesn't cut to a cinematic. It doesn't cut to, um, anything else. Like you walk in there, you have your gun drawn, and you shoot the shit out of them. Mm. Was there even a moment's hesitation for you of whether or not you shot them? No. Yeah, me neither. Four or five times I played this game, I shoot them immediately. I'm too. I'm too invested in saving her. And yeah. Wanting exactly. To, yeah. But theoretically, like another way of looking at this moment is this is a surgeon who's just trying to be a surgeon. He's not, he doesn't have a gun. What's the character's Nobody name again? in this room has any uh, ability to harm you. You could theoretically in the world walk up, take her, holding the gun, threaten them, and leave without having any different. The game doesn't allow you to, though. You have to shoot them. There's no other option. It becomes a game. Um, it didn't even phase me. That's a really interesting point, though, because it didn't even. It's the question of why, like, if you're not going to give me the agency, then give just you... do, do give me a cinematic. Um, now, I will also say never even noticed not having the agency because I shot them fucking immediately. Never even thought about the fact that they were uh, unarmed. Never thought you know about the fact that there's a like shot the shit out of all of them. Now that we're talking about this, what I find really interesting about that in in thinking about it, right? Because I was the same way. I was just like, fuck it. Sure. That's Joel, though. I hate. I mean, like that's who you are. I mean, that is literally who you are. I think it's actually kind of nice because now that I'm I'm thinking of it and trying to think back to that moment in the game, it's. Like, yeah, I think if I was Joel, that might be what I do because there's you're going in to get her and you're removing everybody and it's making you have that moment. Right. Like, yeah, in this world, I'm trying to think as a father in this world. Right. Like if this is my child or my surrogate child, like I don't want them coming after me. Fuck y'all. You're dead. dead. Yeah. I uh, like I said, never had a second has a second seconds worth of hesitation. And maybe because they shot them and I shot them immediately Maybe because they make you do that. Right, you. It's the most in, most engulfing part of the game because you don't get to just watch a cutscene. You experience it, yeah. And maybe, however, you experience it is how much you're invested in this world or what what it does. Because again, I never thought about it. I was like, "Yep, right. I'm going to take you out and I'm going to remove you." Even though, <sighs> so interesting thought about this. This is something I thought about in the end, at the end of it. While I would make that decision, sure. Um, you're sacrificing. You're basically sacrificing lives. You know what I mean? Like you're you're removing, you are trading the entire world for, for one her. person. Um, I I ne- when I would have made the exact same decision. Yeah. And if it's my daughter on the operating table, yeah, me, she comes no. off and the world dies. Me too. And I think it's interesting that the game does such a nice job at this point. I think that the time it takes you to get to this moment when you go through, and this is what I loved about this game, because it's not. It's not just in Boston, right? You're going through all these environments and all these places. It gives you so much time to endear yourself to this, to Ellie. Mm-hmm. Um, they, there's never even a choice, right? The other nice thing about it being this road trip story is that, like, there's no question. Like, it is the entire world that's had this happen. Like, you see yeah. it throughout the entire country. You know this is happening everywhere. There's not that, like, inkling of a, of a question, like, is this the village? Is it actually just this one place like and the, everyone else is okay? Or, like, 28 days later where it's where just it's England. just this one yeah. island. Yeah, no, it's fucking it's everywhere. It's the world. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I thought that was really... Because I think if you don't have that much time with her, if you don't have that much... 
invested in their relationship, which comes through the, the way the game is set up, that understanding the choice that you make, that you choose to not save the world, essentially. The right. choose that their the weight would be less, right? That you're which again I think maybe is why you don't have agency in that moment of the game. It's supposed to so you understand what you're doing. Like you do though. They give you the agency to shoot them. They just it's false agency. Okay. Because you you can't progress the story until you kill them, but you they give you the ability to choose to pull the trigger. Like you have to pull the trigger to progress the story. Okay, I see what you're saying. But I didn't um, even think about it. I was just like, oh. yeah, no, like, yep, yep, never noticed it because I always pulled the trigger. trigger. Um, um, but I think it says a lot about that because of what the choice you're making, right? Like right. you're not gonna save everybody. Um, you're gonna let the world still be fucking horrible. And you kill anybody who can possibly find you and you burn it to the ground. Um, like, yeah, I'll be honest, like that moment where you shoot Maria. Is it yeah. Maria or is it Mar? It's, it's Maria, isn't it? That's her name? Marlene. 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 That's Marlene. right. Um, who's Maria? Maria is, what's her face? No, I don't remember who Maria is. Oh, well, point is, um, I, I, as much as I wanted to be upset and like, like, I, I would have done it. I, yeah, mm-hmm, no. In a second, I'm pulling that trigger. Yep. Um, I didn't even care. I was just like, yep, I've got, listen, I'm here to save this person and it's done. And I don't think that's just a product of video game person either. I think it's a product of what the story does. Sure. And then we have the ending. Okay. Chris, since I know you've been waiting five years. So to sum it all up, he lies to her. She gives him a beautiful... Uh, explanation for why she would be willing to give her life to uh, to save the world about how she had a friend when she was younger who uh, she was bitten with who died and that if she could save that life and any number of other lives she would do it and Joel is it true and he says yeah I fuck like yeah you like it wasn't you you couldn't do it and she knows. Like you can see it in her eyes, right? She knows. So what I love about this, when we talk about heroes and villains in this game, and why I don't think that Tommy's the good guy, because the good guy in this is her. Yes. And I think that is fucking beautiful. Because it means the kid, the child, the one who is arguably has lived through this world in a way that is so unique, is the one good person. And I loved that. That's the thing that got me. So in my eyes, this is the perfect ending because they ride off into the village knowing that the cure was within grasp and that Joel decided to save his daughter instead of saving the world. And that against her wishes, too. against her will, which is what I against her will. And because that's what you do as a parent, right? Is you take agency from your kids a lot. You, yeah, you you do what's right for them, even when they don't want you to. But so what I find really interesting about this game and why I love it. Is I so it's it, it if especially as a parent it puts you in a dichotomy because so here's this thing, yeah that's right for Joel, right. That doesn't necessarily mean it's right for her or right for the world. You make a well, choice. No, it's fucking wrong for the world. Like we we've just spent all this time talking no, about how we knew like they were going to be. Like, I don't think it's necessarily right for her. I think that's the thing. You don't give her the choice. You make it as as. So I mean, look, it's. She's a kid, and so in my eyes at this point, I'm like, nah, you don't get to choose if you die. You you live. See, I don't view I her would, as a kid, uh, though, at that point. She's, she's so much more she's like... She's not in the for the world, but in a parent's eyes, she's the kid. Yeah. Um, I don't care if my, my daughter is 23 someday, and she's saying, I want to die. Nope. Doing everything I can to save you. Like, you may be able to make the decision. Like, I don't know. You may have some sort of terrible, awful disease, and you can decide not to get treatment. I'm still going to do everything in my power to save you. Um, I, 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 I love my daughter. I love my family and I will fight for them to the bitter end. And I think that's what Joel does and he succeeds and it sucks for everybody, but Joel, but Joel did the thing that a parent would do. Yeah. Um, and this is one of those situations where like the thing this, this game tells you is there are no happy endings like every like you lose every time no matter what the situation 
you know, with the instance, even when you win, even when you survive, even when you make it, even when you finally get your family back, you still kind of lose. Cause there's that question of like, is she going to be able to love you the way that, that she did a couple of days ago, knowing that she could have saved the world, but you didn't let her. Cause she can't like, she can't anymore. Like you killed the fucking surgeon. Yeah. You killed all the science people. They're dead. Um, you have burned the world and there's no more choice. So what I find interesting about that is I think it, it really boils down to the dichotomy of being a parent, right? Is, is that right? And I would say that on a like ethical way, which is what I liked about this game, it's not. You make the wrong fucking choice. Sure. You make the right choice viscerally as a parent. You make the wrong choice. And that that's why I love this game is because you make the honest choice. Like, it may not be the good one. It may not be the right one, but it's the honest choice. Yeah. It's what a parent would really do. Yeah, I, I agree. And uh, that's why I have always found this to be, like, in many ways, like, the perfect story for a video game like something that hadn't happened that doesn't occur and that this was like such a tightly knit like a tightly told perfect story that when i heard that there was going to be a sequel i i i I didn't know what to think so i if i'm being so honest about this before we move on to i know i know we're going sequel that I would have liked the choice. I know what choice I would have made. I would have made the choice the game makes. Right. I think what the only thing that would have made this game for me better is that you actually have that choice. So what happens if you choose to save the world? Um, and I think making you as a as a player, I know that most people are going to choose the 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 normal choice, right? But it's the Mass Effect moment. Like, do you kill everybody, or do you kill like? I would have really liked to have had that choice. Well, this isn't a Bioware game, though. This I is know. a Naughty Dog I'm game. Just, it's I'm a just, linear. No, I, I know yeah, what you're I'm saying. I'm just saying I would have um, liked to have had sure. that choice as as someone who was so invested in this world to be able to have, like, really make me live with the consequences of the choice that I'm choosing. And that's something in games that I like a lot now is you tend to have that choice. Right. Um, I would have chosen. I know what I would have chosen, but I would have liked to have had it. So at this point, um, we're going to take a short break. And we're going to come back. Uh, we're going to take a short break. We're going to watch the trailers for the sequel from the last couple of E3s. And then we're going to come back and uh, have a brief discussion about our hopes, our thoughts, our, our anticipation for uh, whatever this sequel might possibly be. So uh, stick around. We'll be right back. And we're back after watching three Last of Us Part Two trailers. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and call them the Hangman trailer, the Guitar trailer, and the Smooch trailer. Um, we don't have to go through all of them, but just in general, what do you kind of get? Uh, what is your impression of the next game? Um, that I think it's going to be very Ellie focused, and looks like it's going to be somewhat of a revenge story or or that's kind of the feeling the guitar trailer gave me was it yeah revenge? um i i really don't know what like so first of all it's obviously set significantly in the future because ellie is definitively not a kid anymore no she looks like she's a teenager uh they've also suggested that ellie is the playable character that she'll probably have companions and stuff like in like the first one but that um she is the playable character and they haven't really said much about the whereabouts of joel well, I mean, I, you kind of get a, a clue that Joel in the guitar trailer is still very present. Also, they mention Joel in one of the trailers. Yeah, I mean, they at least establish that he's alive in the guitar trailer. And the uh, uh, the Smooch trailer, uh, they refer to him as the old man. At least you assume it's him. It could yeah. be Tommy, but uh, presumably it's it's Joel. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a lot of intrigue to me. Um, and like, so watching them back to back, I can't help but wonder if maybe, um, the fireflies have found Ellie and Joel at this camp. And so part of the, the story is maybe Ellie didn't actually, um, 
pick up on Joel's lie. And so she goes on a revenge after they, they kill the town, uh, trying to get revenge on the fireflies. So you think it's the fireflies? I mean, the, the, the guitar trailer pretty clearly establishes that it was a firefly camp that they were, uh, that, that she devastated. There's the the Firefly logo as okay. they're, yeah. they're zooming into there. Um, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm sure there are other factions and people that are going to pop up. Like uh, they they seem to suggest there's some sort of a religious zealot camp That's, in yeah. the the Hangman trailer. Um, but that could be part of the uh, like the the road trip to destroy the Fireflies type of thing. Yeah. Um, I personally wonder if they don't kill the girl you smooch. No. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm figuring is happening. Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, that would be the most uh logical progression of the story yeah um it looks cool i mean the gameplay you know it's funny watching the really long trailer i had the same feeling i have when i was playing the game all right great i got to see the gameplay can you see back at the end of the fucking trailer um <laughs> i think that's my general feeling with these games um uh, the gameplay i just don't care like i, I, I care when she i could like go between the the bookcases this is the difference between people that love watching streaming gaming which i do a little bit but you do more like pulling out the arrow is like a whole animation that just feels like squishy great i could have had that in, i would describe these trailers as squishy they are squishy oh there's so much um, squish it looks cool i also should add that like i'm never gonna play this game or if i do it's gonna be so far past when it actually happens that, that's true that like yeah look it looks cool but it's not like i don't have a playstation so it's hard for me to get like yeah last of us two is coming out that's gonna be great. <sighs> i mean think about it. if there was a game for xbox that you couldn't play and you you know in the same situation would you be as stoked for it probably not because you're not going to get to play it for x amount of years i'm not buying a ps4 well, so I mean, the difference is i i, I have a pc so true. those games come out to that's true pc but um i'm not unless i can't put so the, yes i am entirely in favor of awesome games coming out on the xbox yeah if it was on the xbox i'd probably be more stoked to play said game it does look really cool um the gameplay looked great the graphics are great it's, it seems like an intriguing story um i am i i i'm curious because i think what this is going to largely uh build i mean look you have to imagine that the game's central focus is going to be on the lie that Joel told yeah, at the end it, of the first and game. And if it's not, then that's that's a hugely poor decision on the developers. Um, I, I, mean, I don't know if it's a poor decision. Look, so I, I trust Naughty Dog to do anything. Yeah. Uh, the games that they've created are all phenomenal, especially for the era they were created in. I think Neil Druckmann is a terrific uh, game designer. I think so far he's he did the the first Last of Us game, um, Uncharted Four, and I think he wrote the Lost Legacy game as well that came out shortly after. You feel kind of the same way I do about Bioware in their um, games, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, Bioware. I don't know, man. You didn't play that uh, that last uh, Mass, Mass Effect. Game. Yeah, but Dragon Age to me are some of the best games I've um, played. So, so I I. I trust uh, Naughty Dog so far because they haven't led me astray. Mm-hmm. Um, I do, I I do worry that it's going. I mean, hopefully it won't, but I do worry that they're going to ruin that that perfect ending from the first game. Because it, I mean, it's very clear um, that to some degree they're just going to like. I don't know. I don't want to say they're going to to like like change it because they're not changing it. But I worry that like. By making that that lie the central thesis of the second game, that it it is going to remove some of the impact of it. Would it though? Because think about it this way: if if she, so you see this world that they essentially live in, right? And if you have a really com- ethically complex character, which I'm assuming Ellie is, right? So basically, if that lie comes out and they deal with this, you have Ellie saying, "So I could have made a better world," and like. That's a lot of weight, especially now that you're more of an adult. That makes for a really dynamic story. I think it's harder to to live um, live happily knowing you could have done something well than live miserably trying to do something right. Um, so I think it's a much stronger choice to have Ellie have to live a joyous, happy life in Tommy's town for the rest of her life, knowing that she could have saved the world than it is to say that she didn't actually understand the lie, that she learns of the lie, and now she has to do on, go on some kind of a rampage to fix the whatever. 
I mean, eh, I disagree. I think it's really dynamic for her to find that lie out after these people have come back for her and have taken the things that she found happy and realized that you this all could have been prevented had Joel made a different choice. And if your character still believes what she believed in the car, that's very interesting. Because now you have to deal with the dynamic of her anger from the town being massacred and her, the dynamic of her relationship now with Joel. So the one is not the car. So, she she believed it on the mountaintop. Anyway. The um, hilltop. Whatever. Anyway, the point is like now you're dealing with a bunch of different dynamics as opposed to just like horses. Because think about it, if she's happily in Tommy's town, like yeah, you live with that guilt, but like you're still fucking happy and you live a good life and you're having a good life. So like, what's it mean to have your life shattered and then understand like your father made a choice for you that you might not have wanted or made? I mean, look, you're talking about if like a second game was just her sitting around like like you're talking about an adventure game for the second one where like you just walk around this town talking to people. Um, I'm talking about if there is no second game and that's the the end of the game compared to if like the end of the second game is you sacrifice your life or something. But we do have a second game. Well, yes, we do. But so. my central thesis of my statement, though, <laughs> was I'm worried about them ruining the, the ending of the first. But they're going to because there's a second game. Nick, it's already ruined, Chris. Your thesis is already gone. It's not gone. It's still there. It's just like the answer is all. I mean, like I, mean, I shouldn't say the answer is there. We won't know until who knows when. They haven't re- announced a release date. Your but, ending is ruined by the second um, game. So the point is, is that we're going to have a second game. And we're going to see what happens. It looks cool. I mean, really, the gameplay and the the graphics of it, at least the bit that we got to watch looks really good sure i i have no idea when it's going to come out um but when it does be be assured i will very chris uh, very readily be playing it i will not because i don't have a ps4 (laughs) (laughs) um and with that i think that's going to bring to a close our uh our uh, (laughs) monthly download for the last of us um we've had some discussions about the next game is going to be and when it might take place but uh we're not we're not quite ready to reveal it yet so keep listening to uh to the two dumb dads normal podcast and we should have an announcement for you soon once we figure out some some technical things um but as always uh keep following us at uh, two dumb dads.com uh find me on twitter at chris moss again you can find me at twitter you can find me on twitter at n westmeyer and on instagram at n westmeyer and until next time be well have a good one